Good evening and welcome. Let's take a look at our top story, a vaccine that can give us superhuman strength. Sounds familiar to popular science fiction? Thanks to advancing research, the fictional scripts can soon become a reality. Yes, you heard that right. A top genetic scientist at Stanford University has claimed to have made a groundbreaking superhero vaccine inspired by the DNA code of Olympic athletes and can help transform humanity in the coming years. According to Ewan Ashley, professor of medicine and genetics at Stanford University, the superhero jab can provide lifelong protection against three of the top 10 leading causes of death. Talking about the breakthrough treatment, the vaccine shot would deliver the blueprint of ideal cells from men and women whose genes are more disease resistant than those of the average person. Not just that, it will also have an instruction manual to help the body repair, tweak and improve its own versions. A single dose of this could lead to a body-wide genetic upgrade that would cut the risk of premature death in some adults by as much as 50%. Sounds too good to be true? Don't worry, the scientists have strong claims backing their research. Now, talking to the British news agency, the SWNS, the uh, lead scientist said, and I quote, the genomic medicine has been promised for decades, but thanks to advances in the field, we are now reaching the stage where that promise is set to become reality, ushering in a bold new era of medical treatments. Now, the next question is, how does the superhero jab work? The proposed superhero shot works by delivering strings of genetic code to certain cells in the human body. This code includes multiple versions of a gene editor. The gene editor, a tool like a word processor, which alters just one letter of DNA from a disease-prone version to a disease-resistant version. The editors carry a long inactivated targeting of virus to ensure that they reach the organ safely and are not destroyed by the body's immune system. Note that this lipid technique is used by Pfizer BioNTech to package its COVID-19 vaccine. When the superhero jab, when will it be made publicly available? Now, Ashley says that if the breakthroughs in genome research and technology continue to evolve at the same rapid pace, the vaccine could be widely available worldwide in just 10 years. Trials for the superhero jab are expected to begin as early as in 2026. The likelihood of a superhero vaccine relies on finding real life superhumans whose genes are uniquely resistant to disease or those more capable of fighting them. And such people are between us. An example is the Finnish Olympian, Eero Mantrianata, who has an unusually high level of hemoglobin, indicating an excess of oxygen-carrying red blood cells, which boosted his endurance levels. Now, for more on this leading scientist, Dr. Ewan Ashley is joining us live on the broadcast. Hello and welcome to We Are Not to Begin. Can you briefly explain to our viewers what is this super va the superhero vaccine really? Yeah, so basically uh, this comes from, uh, all grows from the genomic revolution, our ability to sequence genomes. Uh, at a very low cost. So, um, and, you know, this used to cost billions of dollars. It took 10 years, 10 countries to sequence one genome. Now uh, we can do that for a few hundred dollars. And that has, has fueled a revolution in our ability to understand disease and then potentially treat it. And so when we start to sequence genomes at, at scale, like whole populations, we start to find people who are resistant to disease. And we sometimes think of these as some as a bit superhuman, people with very low cholesterol, or people who don't feel pain, you know, people who um, are, are able to resist the effects of Alzheimer's disease. And what we think, and many of the pharmaceutical companies worldwide are now starting to think, is that if we can mimic those people, if we can take their uh, superpowers and, and give them to other people, it, it's a very a good way to, to generate new medications. And, the, uh, and then the other part of it is the, the kind of revolution in genome engineering, the idea of CRISPR and gene editing allows us to potentially give a medication once that can change a single letter in, in a genome 
and then allow someone to be resistant to disease uh, from then on. So that's the basic principle. <clears throat> now, Doctor, my next question to you is, uh, would this not create a world where the rich who could afford the magic pill uh, can have designer babies with all the base genes while the poor would then continue to languish which would be something written and portrayed in many of the futuristic books and movies. Well, I think it's really important to say that no one in our community, and that is to say the community who are focused on the idea of genome engineering, uh, supports at this point the idea of designer babies changing the, the germline or changing future generations. I think we just do not know yet enough about this technology to even consider that. So I think we're all on the same page in thinking it's way too early to think about that. But I think it's not too early to think about targeting certain cells in the body for certain individuals to try and relieve them of suffering and relieve them of disease. But you speak to another very, another very important point, which is we don't want these medications to only be for the rich or for the rich countries. And it's very important, I think, that we put more uh, time and effort into moving the science forward so that we can get those uh, studies done and we get these medications out to the whole world. Now, finally, if this panacea is indeed made available, uh, what happens to the global healthcare spending, which uh, is roughly $10 trillion? <laughs> Wouldn't that be a wonderful world to, to live in? Well, I, you know, as a doctor and a scientist who tries to prevent heart disease, uh, I would love a world where we didn't see any more heart disease, where heart disease was not the number one killer across the world. I would be happy uh, to be put out of a job as a doctor if everyone had a great diet and exercised and was resistant uh, to disease. We're really focused, though, of course, on not making people live forever, but rather giving them good quality of life. Fortunately, those two things go together. If we can push out disease, people can ha live a longer and, and healthier life. And if that meant less healthcare spending, then I think we'd all be very happy with that. Thank you so much for being with us on this broadcast there, Dr. Ewan Ashley, explaining the latest on this genome theory. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.